Devin Pipe of the Dallas International Film Festival. One of the roots of DIFF from its first years, even before it was the Dallas International Film Festival, was when Deep Ellum Arts Festival branched off into film and focused on music and performing arts. That tradition continues with the 2014 festival and one of the phenomenal films is a history of hip hop in Dallas. We are Dallas, or we from Dallas, sorry. I, you know, I, I, I had the first part of the intro yeah. in, but you know, we, we won't fix it in the edit. I started out my career at the Dallas Observer and I was there in the late 80s and early 90s to see a lot of the bands you guys focus on as part of the film. First off, phenomenal job in chronicling a scene that people don't really give enough credit for here in town. Uh, Teddy, uh, Teddy Cool and Jello are here. Guys, first off, talk a little bit about when you first started assembling footage, saying we've got to put this together as a documentary. Well, it it started actually as a, a, a more of a graffiti and street art project. Uh, we were really just kind of putting something together that was more of a visual piece for people that were coming to a nightclub or a different event, just really to look at and the audio was, wasn't even really uh, our, our point. It was just something to look at. So, but as it built and as we started doing these, these interviews and it just started to snowball and there was a couple other small events along the way that just, we decided to open the whole scope to the whole hip hop culture. And, uh, you know, and it just snowballed. It just kept building. And it's like the, the deeper we dug, the, the bigger, you know, the, the larger the snowball got and it just, it just started taking on life all its own. And even the, the title, the We From Dallas, it's, you know, it's, it's grammatically correct to its audience. You know, that's what uh, Easy Eddie D said to us. Because it, it is a, an interesting, you know, it's kind of, it's a not right thing. We get the We Are Dallas a lot of people like fixing it on their own. But uh, it, it's just, it's funny. It's grammatically correct to its audience and to its people. So. When you were first approaching these artists who, some of them are still recording today, some of them have, mm -hmm. have gone on to, you know, basically day jobs or gone away from their career. Was there one artist that you wanted to, once you got into the production where you said, we've got to get this person, was there one that you didn't get? Was there one that got away? Yeah. Um. <laughs> The biggest, I guess the biggest fish, there was a lot of, of course, the list was big. I mean, it was trying to get all those names. Somehow we all worked out everyone, but, you know, we really wish we could have got Erica Badu on, you know, speaking about it. And uh, just because her early projects, you know, it, going back, she's referenced by a number of people as, you know, seeing her as a young little girl and just, I mean, they remember her coming up through the scene, through the Dallas music scene and, you know, her branching off into other areas. So. Understandably so, she's not noted for, you know, making hip hop per se, you know, but she has an influence on the culture and the people that were here. So it was like trying to get just to some of her uh, reminiscent moments of back then, you know, that have been nice to kind of have. And it was cool in going through the film, you know, our other co-producer, uh, Islam Salem, each of us uh, are passionate almost about a different branch of hip hop. Like Joel was was very passionate about getting making sure the Southern culture was represented right alongside the more elemental hip hop culture, whereas Islam was more, uh, you know, definitely instrumental in getting the graffiti involved and getting the break dancers involved. So everybody kind of championed their own and had their own artists that they were very passionate about pursuing and, and getting in the film. But yeah, Erica. All three of us wanted Erica pretty bad. <laughs> was there was there almost? I mean, was there? heated arguments in the edit suite where this piece needs to be longer. We need more of this element. And nothing ever got heated. We'd all, we'd just sit there and just pick at it and go over it and, you know, and it would always be the, the simplest suggestions that later on, you know, the next day I'd call them up and be like, it worked. Everybody come over and watch it, you know, now. There's a lot of great archival footage. You know, just people who are you know, shooting it in handy cams and clubs like, or, or you know, not just Dada and Trees, but the clubs that have been long gone from Elm for a long time. And then um, the current renditions would be like the stuff that's going on in the South Side lots or mm -hmm. um, or Oakland social areas like that. Were you surprised at the width and breadth of the archival stuff you were able to get from these artists? We, we, we were uh, very happy with everything we were able to come up with, and we do wish if there was one thing we could add to the film that we would go back and do before we released it beyond the festivals, it would be to add more archival footage. Being able to find more of that and to really take you there and, and put you in that era 
is, is probably the most important thing with a documentary like this. And uh, we, we were very happy to, to get uh, footage from City Lights and footage from Jeff Lyles of Trees and of Deep Ellum and footage from Frank Compagna of the old murals. And we, uh, we definitely did our due diligence, but uh, more as always, well, <laughs> you know. Talk a little about as you as you're assembling the, the bits. What was the, the there? There's got to be one moment for each of you where you're 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 in the edit suite. You're looking at it going. That's that's the movie for me. That's the one thing. If I have to show this to anybody, this is what I would show them. Uh, I think what ended up playing out. I think that we started off with some different ideas, but what ended up playing out was more of the '80s and just the early documentation of setting out, you know, really putting out there who these people were and the founding people were in Dallas hip hop. I mean, that's it's a good, you know, portion of the project and the movie. So I think that ended up playing out. We were like, we have to have this part. We have to explain in order to, to move forward in the story and, and tell it like mm -hmm. this has to be established. It might be longer than we might cut some other things short, but, you know, Mm -hmm. Having the foundation, we needed to have that explained bottom line, and we we toyed we toyed with it moving around like how we're introducing it and how it's all relative to people and not just Dallas, but and how to introduce that. But uh, I think for me, I don't know, maybe for us too, we just that was that was a, so that's what it seemed like. It was like eighties. Yeah. Got to talk about that no matter what. Yeah, and it definitely. Uh, I mean, it didn't start that way. That was just right. a shift through the filming. We honestly thought that it all kind of started in the you know early '90s, maybe a little bit in the '80s, but we weren't really gonna you know get that much into it. And our focus was gonna be more the '90s and the 2000s. And we shot for that. You know, our interviews, our talk to people all the way up through you know 2010. I mean, we had no idea what we were gonna get out of the footage, so we just talked about everything. The interviews would be horrendously long. Like two or three hours just of sitting there just talking, yeah. but it was great hearing all these stories and learning so much about the city and just and you know these these people have become our friends and what's, what's crazy is you know to see them out you know just out and about and you know I've met this guy maybe one time but it was for this three hour interview but I sit and watch him daily so like I feel like I know this person very well and they like they barely remember me or something it's kind of funny. Well, they'll remember you once the you know if the ancillary. I mean that that's the trick though because a lot of these albums that like for example Nemesis you, mm -hmm. you I mean you can you might be able to go to Half Price or Bucks Burnett's shop and find some some of their albums but for the majority of it these albums are lost in time mm -hmm. do you think that we from Dallas might be able to at some point do um, maybe a re-release of some of their material as maybe a soundtrack. Oh, we'd love to. We would definitely love to. And, and Nemesis is a great example of, of uh, a strong Dallas sound uh, early on, developed in the 80s. Uh, we, we loved their music, and their music plays definitely plays a role in the film. We, we talked about doing a soundtrack. Soundtrack is when all of a sudden we start talking about a lot of business stuff that I'm going to let the executive... <laughs> I've discovered that I do not want to do that. And I'm going to just stick with I'll just shoot this stuff. Can I use this music? I can use this? I can use yeah. it. Okay, cool. Let's, let's go. We're clear for broadcast. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, a soundtrack would be great. More films. Like I said, we shot and we have footage taking us up through like the next 10 years. Like the, the film basically goes from 1982 till roughly 99, 2000. Well, we have footage and information to take us from 2000 up to 2010, which are all planned for just additional content or special features for the, the DVD. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty more We From Dallas, that's for sure. We, we, we still from Dallas? That's it. <laughs> we, we all from Dallas. I have no problem with that. Um, I was just having, I mean, I, I, I love the film just because it was, a, it was a unique time for people who loved music. Not just, not just hip hop, but really everything was happening. Mm -hmm. Not just in LME. I mean, you had um, Addison with, with a lot of pop-up clubs that would come through. Greenville Avenue um, had two or three joints like that. So it was just really great to see that scene depicted again. Um, you guys don't look like you're my age. You look a lot younger than I am. Did, did you have like a, a first experience with um, going into a hip hop club in that era? I'm, I'm curious to see what your first exposure was to it. Man, I'll never forget my, my first hip hop memory. Uh, I must have been eight or nine. I was at, I was at a neighborhood birthday party at 
and I was the friend of the younger kid. It was like my friend's older sister was turning 16 or something. So we were the little rugrats. Mm -hmm. And there was like five or six of us, and we were all just huddled around the record player. And it was, and I, I vividly remember all of us in there holding the uh, Beastie Boys License to Ill album cover, you know, the airplane has crashed, and just blown away. You know, it was that, and it was Run DMC. It was, you know, that I grew up in Maryland. And so that these were my first exposures. It was like that, kind of that first round of, of hip hop, you know, that, that came out of New York. There was a whole round that, that still stayed in New York, but the first national exposure uh, round of hip hop, uh, you know, growing up and being a part of. So hip hop's always been there for me. Hip hop, but just along, like you're saying, these other cultures too, punk rock was huge. And the whole alternative thing was happening too. Like music always played a huge role for me in my life and to, uh, you know, through learn the way I learned filmmaking is through music. I just decided to pick up a camera, so I just started shooting music videos because I knew people around for that, and that made sense to me. I DJed, so kind of I took the the skills from DJing and applied that to editing, like mixing things together and timing. And so, music has played a role in helping me figure out being a filmmaker. So making this music documentary just it made a whole lot of sense. Joel, what about you? Uh, same thing with him. It was like the cousin. I was I was young, and my cousin got a Beastie Boy license. To, that was the first one, really. I remember that was like my early, early, earliest reminiscence of anything. The uh, in the Dallas hip hop, uh, or in that era, I remember going to. I used to go to a place here in, in uh, Lower Greenville, around ninety seven, ninety eight. It was uh, called the Royal Rack, and uh, it was a little Caribbean. They did some drum and bass stuff there. But uh, I would go down to Deep Ellum and. Um, it was around that time, 98, 99. I was like 17, 16 at the time. So I didn't really get a chance to go in or move around into any of those spots. But uh, through the documentary and just the people that we've met along the way and just everything kind of still blended. And uh, I started doing music around that time in 97 here in Dallas. And uh, I mean, we're like 15, 16 years later. So it's like, it's, I don't know, the roots are kind of in Deep Ellum, in Lower Greenville for me. And then uh, just, chipping away at it over the years, man. What are you looking for to get this documentary out past the festival circuit? Um, I, I always hate asking the question about distribution, especially for a film like this where there's so many rights clearances issues, not just for for showing it in a festival, but getting it onto a Blu-ray where you can have all of that extra footage as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, because you're the director, I will ask the producer. Um, what are you looking at as far as, as getting it out there? Um, there's definitely the the whole the exposure that the film festival you know gives us. The platform that it's providing is like hopefully knocking on the doors and intriguing enough people so that we move on to the next project and hopefully somebody picks it up, man. And then we just got a an idea and a layer of uh, you know a platform or uh, we have a set list of how we want this thing to come out. It's like, all right, it's going to start here. If we can make that happen, if not, we're going to get out here and mm -hmm. worst case scenario, we pop it out the trunk, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, no, there's a, we definitely have a list of uh, plans of how to get it out for sure. I don't know how to yeah. get lost in that one. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hip hop, so we're going to do whatever we have to. Uh, we've got a couple more festivals that we're thinking about hitting, uh, We'll let the executives deal with any kind of distribution deal, but at the end of the day, we'll, we'll just sell it out of the trunk. And uh, our real goal, I think, is to do another one, to do just another film. I think we all, you know, are hooked now that we've done one. It's just like, we what's next? There's kind of a formula. We, we kind of looked at it and we're like, all right, we need to definitely know what to do next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next time, yeah. We're you made all the mistakes out of this one. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we did this totally backwards. We yeah. just started shooting and then decided what film we were going to make. So then, then it was like halfway through the film is when we like stopped and did the research that we should have done. But, but it's the type of thing that if you had done that research in the beginning, it would have scared you out of making the film and it would have never been done. Yeah. You know, it's always just jump in the fire and learn how not to get burned as opposed to just you know watch it so the trick is to get out here and actually see this film it is a phenomenal document of a story that i don't think a lot of people who even are listening to hip-hop today understand that dallas has, has had and continues to have an amazing community of artists we from dallas come see it you can find out more information at dallasfilm.org uh, what's the uh, website for the film uh 
it's, Fa- I guess our Facebook. Yeah, it's Twitter. facebook.com backslash we from Dallas. All right. Yeah. Check it out. Gentlemen, thank you so much for bringing this film to us, and thanks for putting in the work and deciding to scrap everything and start from scratch and <laughs> make it a really great documentary. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Appreciate it. Appreciate thank you. you.